My mind, I'm like a Xerox printer. I, you know, I'm Christian, but I'll tell you something. I, I talked to a healer that said, I'm dealing with resentment from multiple lives of disloyalty. To have the black vote be in group sync and to not separate from the thought and be in completely in line with the agenda of the left, the Jewish media, and the Chinese. That's a lot of Chinese things got something to do with it? They got something to do with everything. This is my issue. Hello, video watchers. Internet AJ, your second favorite YouTuber here. Here's the intro by your favorite YouTuber, Jay Aubrey. Today, we're going to discuss the artist Ye, formerly known as Kanye West. A once inspiring story, Kanye has been widely considered a musical underdog who beat all odds to become one of the most famous people in the world. Selling over 160 million records and winning 24 Grammys, his albums have incorporated a wide range of elements, from synthesizers and orchestras to gospel and Christian themes, not to mention his captivating fashion design. He went from being $53 million in debt to creating the cultural phenomenon known as Yeezy Shoes, which propelled him to billionaire status. Throughout his career, West has praised other black artists, used soul, and idolized black beauty. He even launched the Kanye West Foundation to improve dropout and illiteracy rates in Chicago, a true rags to riches story. He was the kid from Chicago who made it big. However, in recent years, Kanye has begun to taint his public image, dragging his wife Kim Kardashian online despite sharing four kids with her, making anti-Semitic remarks, and even wearing a White Lives Matter shirt. This is the unfortunate decline of Kanye West. Please subscribe and hit the bell notification because YouTube has not been recommending my videos lately. Before I get into it, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Tej Hanley. They have helped me start and maintain my entire skincare routine by making everything uncomplicated. Honestly, it's the best skincare system for guys like you and me. I recommend you start with their level 1 system which comes with all the basics. There's a daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin. There's also an exfoliating scrub to get rid of the dead skin cells. On top of that, they have an AM moisturizer with SPF 20 because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun. Finally, make sure to use the PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. My favorite part about Tej Hanley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to to use and in what order. They really make the process of achieving and maintaining amazing skin easy. Their products made my skin look and feel better than ever, but don't take my word for it. They have over 5,000 five-star reviews on their website from satisfied customers from around the world. In addition to amazing skin, members of Tej Hanley get tons of benefits, including at least 20% off the retail price, the ability to customize your box, exclusive monthly deals, pause or cancel at any time, and free US shipping, and low-cost shipping to most other countries. Because Tej Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. Now back to the video. So it's obvious Kanye West is no more a stranger to controversy than I am to racism online. In 2005, West said George Bush didn't care about black people during a fundraiser for victims of Hurricane Katrina. George Bush doesn't care about black people. In 2009, he exploded in infamy for taking the microphone from Taylor Swift at the MTV Music Video Awards and stating Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. I, I'm really happy for you. I'm going to let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. As shocking as it was, it became a meme and solidified Kanye as a celebrity who wasn't afraid to speak his mind. People loved his out-of-pocket behavior and respected his flagrant desire to be true to himself. I mean, if he could go after suspected closeted 4chan user and teen heartthrob Taylor Swift, then he could do anything. Kanye was, well, Kanye, and his unpredictable behavior was fascinating to witness. Not to mention, his high-profile marriage to Kim Kardashian in May 2014 was all the mainstream media could talk about. Wes wed perhaps the biggest socialite ever who had her own reality show keeping up with the Kardashians and two previous divorces. Detractors pointed out their marriage would never last given Kim's narcissistic behavior and Kanye's erratic personality. However, early on, Kanye easily integrated into the Kardashian family. He first appeared in Keeping Up With The Kardashians in Season 7, Episode 9, and the two were very cute together from the get-go. Kanye once threw out her entire closet and bought her a new wardrobe. This sparked a new age of fashion for Kim, who would later take over the media with her looks. Over time, the duo became one of the biggest power couples in America. 
In May 2018, though, Kanye fell under fire for saying slavery sounded like a choice in a TMZ interview. Mind you, this was after he paraded around wearing a MAGA hat in public and expressed his love for Donald Trump. When you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years, that sounds like a choice. This was particularly confusing as he previously supported President Barack Obama's campaign, who was a Democrat. Most just chalked it up to Kanye being Kanye and supported him nonetheless. Around this time, Weston Kardashian's marital struggles were publicly aired on their family's reality show. Kanye, who once supported Kim's fashion career, was now upset she wore revealing clothing. You now say that you're not into me wearing a tight you dress. You are my wife, and it affects me when pictures are too sexy. Of course, it's like a formal underwear. It's hot. It's like oh my hot. god! So like the night before the fact, you're gonna come in here and say that you're not into a corset bag. Another time, Kim stated how demanding he was when he wanted a Band-Aid. We had a fight because I wouldn't get him a Band-Aid. I said, did you look in the proper place? There's a Band-Aid here. He didn't like that one. So we wanted another one. So there was a Band-Aid there, and I put it on him. He didn't like the color of the Band-Aid. And so we went upstairs in the kids' room, and I go, oh, look, North has Jesus Band-Aids. Put on a Jesus Band-Aid. And he was like, I've slaved around the world making clothes for you to make sure that you find the best outfit and you let me go out wearing a Jesus Band-Aid. Kim later expressed her frustration when he moved to his Wyoming ranch as they had four kids and she was based in Los Angeles. We deserve Thanks. someone that can go support his every move yeah. and go follow him all over the place and move to Wyoming. I can't do that. He should have a wife that supports his every move and travels with him and does everything and, and I can't. The cracks in the Grammy Award increased by the year 2020. Ironically, that's when he posted a tweet of him seemingly urinating on one, which by the way didn't stop him from later winning another Grammy. God, I wish I was that Grammy. Anyways, 2020 was the year Kanye West ran for President of the United States. While sporting a haircut that said 2020, he revealed that Kim and him considered aborting his daughter Nord during a rally. And no, a presidential one, not a KKK one. We talked about her not having this child. She had the pills in her hand. You know those pills where you take the pills, and if you take it, it's a wrap. The baby's gone. And I'm going to take it. He also went on a Twitter rant accusing Kim of cheating on him and compared her mother to Kim Jong-un. They tried to fly in with two doctors to 5150 me. I've been trying to get divorced since Kim met with Meek at the Waldorf for prison reform. I got 200 more to go. This my lady tweet of the night, Chris Jong-un. Lil Baby my favorite rapper but won't do a song with me. He then called them white supremacists. Which, by the way, didn't make any sense given their dating history. Chris and Kim put out a statement without my approval. That's not what a wife should do. White supremacy. Although the two separated in January 2021, the disrespect of Kim's family combined with West's reveal of private information regarding abortion of their daughter North were upsetting to Kim. In fact, they were the straws that broke the camel's back and pushed her to file for divorce in February 2022. In October 2021, while separated, Kardashian began dating SNL star and former Ariana Grande lover Pete Davidson. Their relationship was very public and clearly bothered Ye. The Jesus Walks rapper then went in public claiming Kim Ye needed to be back together. I'm doing everything to be right next to the situation. Right next to the situation. I'm trying to uh, express this way in the most sane way possible, the most calm way possible, but I need to be back at home. Why is that? I'm saying it's I because if the enemy can separate Kim Ye, there's going to be millions of families that feel like that separation is okay. Kanye also publicly proclaimed he felt alienated from his children, bought the house next door to Kim, and sent her flowers on Valentine's Day. He even made an Instagram post saying he didn't want his daughter North on TikTok after Kim let her. I said, I'm not allowing my daughter to be used by TikTok, to be used by Disney, uh... I have a say so. Taking it a step further, he spread a rumor that Pete Davidson had AIDS. Not even HIV, full blown AIDS. He told me I had AIDS. As if this wasn't enough, in March 2022, he made a music video kidnapping and decapitating a claymation character that looked exactly like Davidson. Fighting back, Pete sent Ye a shirtless selfie saying he was in bed with his wife after he asked where he was. Where are you right now? In bed with your wife. This, of course, infuriated Ye. Trevor Noah actually said light on the harassment Kim was getting from West and discussed their issues on his show. And the reason I say that is because of his harassment of Kim. 
which I know is crazy to say, because there's a lot of people who go like, Kim Kardashian, she loves publicity. She loves celebrity. She loves all of this. She does the Kardashians. This is her life. This is her thing. Yeah, and I get it, but there's also an element of a woman saying to her ex, hey, please leave me alone. In response, Wes posted a Google search of Noah with a caption on Instagram which referred to Trevor Noah as a racial slur. He basically transformed the song Kumbaya, my lord, to Kumbaya. A kun is used to describe a black person who rejects or undermines their ethnicity. He essentially claimed Noah was going against his own race by calling him out, which sounds like gaslighting to me. Sadly, the harassment of Pete didn't stop when he and Kardashian broke up in August 2022. Shortly after hearing the news, he posted on Instagram that Skeet Davidson had died. The online abuse brought on by Kanye was so bad, Davidson revealed he went to trauma therapy. Of note, Davidson suffers from borderline personality disorder. Well, as some of you may know, I was recently diagnosed with a borderline personality disorder. On October 3rd, 2022, Kanye erupted the internet in flames like it was the enemy of Drogon the Dragon in Game of Thrones. You see, Ye and Candace Owens, a black conservative influencer and talk show host, stepped on stage for season 9 of his Yeezy show collection in Paris with shirts that said White Lives Matter. This clearly wasn't a joke as Owens is a known critic of the Black Lives Matter movement and recently released a documentary calling BLM a lie. Understandably, Ye upset fans and critics alike. Even Diddy took to Instagram to discuss his disappointment. The white Lives Matter t-shirt, I don't rock with it. In response, Ye posted their private conversation on Instagram. Send me a address. Let's stop playing these internet games. And don't feel threatened. You'll be fine. Just love. This ain't a game. I'ma use you as an example to show the Jewish people that told you to call me that no one can threaten or influence me. I told you this was war. Now go and get you some business. I'm just trying to talk to you as a black man. And I'm talking to you because this is hurting our people. Stop. Anything you text, I will post. I love you. And you guys are breaking my heart. I accept your apology in advance. Wow, I accept your apology in advance. I have to admit that was a pretty great line, but still, the whole situation was unsettling. Due to his anti-Semitic remarks to Diddy, West was banned on Instagram. Refusing to be accosted by celebrities or the general public, Kanye doubled down by wearing the same White Lives Matter shirt to his kid's basketball game where he sat right behind his ex-wife, Kim Kardashian. On October 7, 2022, he appeared on Tucker Carlson and stated the reason he wore the White Lives Matter shirt was, well, because white lives really do matter. They're looking for an explanation and people say, well, as an artist, you don't have to give an explanation, but as a leader, you do. Yes, I think that's right. So the answer to why I wrote White Lives Matter on a shirt is because they do. It's the obvious thing. On October 8th, 2022, Kanye went on Twitter to vent about being banned on Instagram and wrote this. Look at this, Mark. How you gone kick me off Instagram? You used to be my N-word. Funnily enough, Elon Musk welcomed him with open arms by writing, Welcome back to Twitter, my friend. Several hours later, though, he dropped this bomb, which sent shockwaves through the Twitterverse like it was a racist earthquake. I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going DeathCon 3 on Jewish people. The funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew also. You guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. Naturally, people were concerned about Ye ramping up his anti-Semitic remarks and also unleashing DEFCON 3, which sounded like some kind of ethnic cleansing campaign. In no time, West's Twitter account was locked and he could no longer tweet. On October 12, 2022, JP Morgan Chase informed West he had to find another banking institution to hold his multi-billion dollar company Yeezy. Around that time, West released a 30-minute documentary called Last Week on his YouTube channel with 8.7 million subscribers. In it, he showed prawn to several Adidas executives in a business meeting. In a Drink Champs interview on October 16, 2022, the creator of Gold Digger said that George Floyd passed away from fentanyl and not because the police officer put his knee on his neck. The day when he died, he said a prayer for, you know, eight minutes. Mm -hmm. He said a prayer for eight minutes. They hit him with the fentanyl. If you look, the, the guy's knee wasn't even on his neck like that. When he said, Mama, Mama his, is his girlfriend. They said he screamed for his mama. Mama was his girlfriend. It's in the documentary. But something that hit me, that fucked me up when I was watching the documentary, and it said they want a tall guy like me. When I looked at that image of him, this tall black dude with the bald head, he reminded me of somebody else. Who do you think he reminded me of? Virgil. He reminded me of Virgil. 
I literally lost 5 IQ points watching that clip. I truly don't understand how Ye talking about Virgil, a reference to Louis Vuitton fashion designer Virgil Abloh, made sense to anyone. I couldn't believe when everyone else in the room seemed to understand exactly what he was getting at. Like, oh yeah, of course, totally, makes sense. Ye went on to say Plan B was created for black population control and he wanted to make a Plan A for others. It was confusing to say the least. Plan B was created by Margaret Sanger with the KKK for black population control. And what am I doing? What I'm doing is providing a plan A, an opportunity where you can bring your children if you feel like you can't take care of them. The interview sparked incredible backlash and was eventually removed from YouTube. In addition, George Floyd's family announced plans to sue Ye for $250 million for defamation. Ultimately, Ye is undergoing a significant mental decline in front of the public eye. He has a known bipolar diagnosis and has been hospitalized multiple times. He dragged the mother of his four children online, abused Pete Davidson, wore a White Lives Matter shirt, made anti-Semitic remarks, and claimed George Floyd died from fentanyl. He is legitimately digging his own grave. On top of that, he is risking losing his billion dollar brand with his emotional business decisions. I mean, he outright said he is going to drop Gap and Adidas as soon as their contracts end. Too bad they beat him to it. On October 25th, 2022, Adidas dropped Ye and Forbes reported he lost his billionaire status. Not to mention Vogue and Balenciaga cut ties with him too. On another note, West revealed he founded Donda Academy, an elite Christian private school in Simi Valley, California, which was named after his deceased mother. The school is shrouded in mystery as families have to sign a non-disclosure agreement and classes include choir and parkour. None of his four children attend the school despite his insistence, which reflects just how strained his co-parenting relationship is with Kim Kardashian. I want my kids to go to Donda and I have, a, I have to fight for a say-so. I genuinely wish Ye the best, but think his drawn-out custody battle, broken business deals, and problematic beliefs are only bringing out the worst in one of the most loved black artists of our generation. I hope he is able to rectify his toxic public image. I personally think he needs mental help now more than ever, but first has to be willing to get that help. Only time will tell how this situation plays out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.